Hey, <laughs> welcome back to our new tutorial. Today we will look at how we can create cool text effects inside of and with the help of our greatly friend Geometry Nodes inside of the newest Blender version, which is currently the, the 3.5 the 3.5 alpha version. And you can download it via the Blender Launcher, which is a utility you can download it via the uh, browser or you can download it from the blender.org website under the downloads tab or experimental. And then we are ready to go. And here inside of Blender, we can of course delete. We can delete everything and we need our default queue back as always, doesn't make sense, but we do it. And then we can drag our little time window up here and we can change it to the geometry nodes editor. Now we can create a new node tree. We can center our view and we can scale it a bit so we have more room to play. And I will also close this end panel here because we don't need this. You can do this by mouse or by using the N key on your keyboard. Now we have here our geometry flowing through but now we want to do some texts inside of geometry nodes. And there is a very simple note for this. And we have now this redesigned add menu. So you can add nodes with shift and A on your keyboard. And this is now a redesign of the add menu. Like it or not, I think it will be a little bit better. It was getting very long. So <laughs> I think this will help a little bit with that. And now you have sub sub categories. So you have to really know where your things are or you can just search it. But now we want to go into the utilities and here we have the sub sub menu <laughs> text. And here we want to use the string to curves node and we can plug that in here. And this automatically uses a string. So string is an input type. We can also add this here by doing this, you can just expose this. And string is an attribute which has letters. So we can input here our attribute, which is a string. So that means it contains letters. And this node converts our letters into curves. And how does it look like? So here I can type Thank you all for watching. And then we can see we have here a bunch of curves which contain our words. And of course, before you all comment it, I'm bad at writing English. I'll be honest. So let's delete this H. I've Googled it <laughs> and let's move on. So we have now here, uh, it's so stupid. <laughs> we have now here our curves as our letters and we can work with them. This node now outputs us for every letter curves and every letter is an own instance. So we can, so we can create our first effect. So, but for, uh, but at first let's make this real geometry because simple curves, you can see simple curves in when you render your scene because they have no geometry. So we want to fill our curves with um, faces. So with shift A, we can go into the add menu as set. And then let's see, I'm not very familiar with this new design. It should be under curves. And then let me see where it is. It should be um, under operations and then, oh, uh, curves operations and fill curve. So now we fill every every letter with some faces. And it looks like this. And now we can see it also in rendered mode. If you also want to have it three dimensional, you can use in the mesh sub menu, the it should be under operations now, the extrude mesh node, and you can extrude your geometry. Of course, not that much, maybe a little bit like this. And that should be really cool. 
But now we want to create our first effect. And for this, we will be using an, an empty like here and we can change its position. Now we want to translate our instances. So we are going into the instances submenu and here we use the translate instances node. With this, we can change the position of our instances. And of course it's in field. So we can use other objects or other fields to change those values in here. So we want to have the position data from our empty. So we drag it with drag and drop into our geometry nodes editor. And in here, we change its type to relative. So it takes the current position and not the original position. Now in here, we want to use our position attribute. So this is the position from our letters and we want to use the vector math node. Yeah, of course. So this was completely bullshit. So let's delete this. And of course we want to separate our axes. So here we want to use the X axis and then we want to use a math node. We want to subtract it. And here on the top, we want to also use the X axis. And now this should look like this. And this is correctly. Now we want to use an combine X, Y, Z node because we only want to have the Z axis be affected, the Y axis be affected. So <laughs> now this should look something like this. And this is completely what we want because now we can use an map range node like this and we can limit we can limit this effect so here we can change the range of our effect maybe make it a little bit higher and here the range and i want to have it smooth stepped so it'll take smoother step and now we have a nice animation like this and this is already something you can work with right we can make it maybe a little bit higher like this and the fall of a little bit bigger. So now you have a cool animation like this. Isn't that nice? But now we want to have the letters that are here on the top. We want to have them scaled down to zero. So they are appearing here from nothing and then they scale up to the end. How can we do this? We can just go into the instances menu again and here we have the scale instances and we just simply use another map range with the same value as the scale but of course we have to change the values so flip them down so the maximum is zero and the minimum is one and now you can see this already works and you can change around with the values but this is a great effect isn't it it looks really pro like and this should be our first effect so we will make three effects so stay tuned we will make this thing a material so let's go into the material sub menu set the material and we want to create of course a new one I am material one righty and now let's make the background completely black and yes let's make this thing emissive like this and let's enable bloom not motion blur bloom and now this looks great so now let's make our second effect and for this we want to duplicate our text and we want to delete all that stuff here and let's use a rotate in oh 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 of course we have to make sure you hit this little two here so we don't override our effect here on the top so now we want to have a rotate instances and let's connect this again and now we want to have our maximum of two times pi. So two 
times pi. So they are rotating two times. And now if we make it like this, you can see this nice effect. So they are wrapping around and you can already use this as an effect, but we want to do more. So here you can also change the pivot point and you can make crazy things with this. So you can make stuff for instance like this. So they are swirling around, change this pivot point here however you want. So something like this. And yes, there are endless cap capabilities. So this is of course crazy, but it's also an effect, right? We can experiment with this little bit around so you can make a cool, a cool rotating effect with this. So the last effect, so let's change the material for this. So we want to make this another material and let's use an orange for this one. It doesn't apply because we have to use our second material like this and let's bump up the emission. <coughs> but now we want to have also, also an outline for this. So we take here our curves and we drag them to the curve to mesh node. Where is it? Curve to mesh here. And we use a profile curve. So curve to power primitives, curve circle as set. I'm new to this window <laughs> and let's view it here. Oh, that's not great. But if you want to do this kind of effects, of course you're able to, but here we don't want to have this. So here we have our outline and let's change the resolution. So it's not that that laggy. And for our outline, we want to have another material, but let's join them first together like this. And let's use our first material for this. So they are nicely separated like this. And now if you move your, where is it here, empty, you have some great text effects like this. So now let's use our third effect. So let's duplicate everything and let's make this an own and this also. And now we want to delete everything and let's also delete this here on the top. So now we want to have a cool wavy effect and we can do this by, by using the position and the combine X, Y, uh, the separate X, Y, Z node. We can plug this in here. And then we use the combine X, Y, Z node. And of course, we don't need the rotate instances, we need the translate instances like this, because we want to change the position of our instances. And we want to use the X on the Y. Now we have this effect again, but now we want to limit this with an math node and a sign. Where is it? Here, like this. And now we have already an effect happening. So before the sign, we take a multiply node so we can change the, the frequency of our waves. And after the sign, we will also drag and multiply so we can change the amplitude of our waves. Before the multiply, we will also drag an add node because here we can add the time. So if you, you go into the input and the scene, we have the scene time node and here we can drag the seconds into the add. And now you can see we have a great animation. And of course you can change everything on the fly. Also the frequency, and this is hilarious <laughs> to be honest. Um, now you can also create a cool effect with a color ramp like this. If you crank 
this up here, you can get cool effects like this. And now we want to do the material side of things. So we have a new material, material three. But for this material, we want to have the attribute of our of our position. So if they are here on the top floor or on the bottom floor, we want to have this information, our shading. So we will drag the color output from our color ramp into the group output. So we output it into a new attribute. And here in the modifier properties, we can give this new attribute a name. So we call it strawberry like this. So I demonstrate it like this because I want to show you that you can call it whatever you want. You can call it like your grandmother or whatever. Um, it doesn't matter as long as you use it, as long as you use the same name in, in the shader editor. So this is just a code name for your attribute where you have stored your data in. Now in the shading, so let's go in here. We want to drag the attribute. So we grab an attribute input node. And here we grab the strawberry attribute. And let's look at it. It doesn't work. Did I draw berry? It doesn't work. What is happening? So I think we need to. Yes. So we have instances and this kind of thing doesn't work on instances. So we need to realize our instances here in the end like this and we can delete this. And now we can see we have our data in the shading. So now we can go back into the shader editor and we can use a color ramp for our attribute here. We can plug this into the emission color and now we can define the different colors for our floors. And now these are the three effects that I wanted to show you today. And I hope you liked it. And you can create, of course, a lot more. So let me know if you like this little tutorial. And yes, if you want to support me or if you want to have great materials, you can check out my material pack on my Gumroad page. There I have very cool and if you want to have all kinds of materials that you want to drag very simple into your scene. You can check that out if you want to. It would make me very happy. And yes, other than that, thank you all for watching our little tutorial here. And yes, I hope you had fun. I did. And hopefully see you again. Bye.